One of the things that I think I found so much with everyone in Guantanamo was the empathy. You know, Mohamedou, the day after I saw your mother and filmed that thing, my father died when I was there in uh, Mauritania. And so, you know, just as you have that difficult time being away from your mom, uh, I was down there when my dad died and it's something I'll never forget. Just quickly with the others, um, Omar Dugay is my favorite lawyer in Guantanamo. You know, Omar Hader, it's lovely to see him now all grown up and all that stuff. You know, Ahmed, the general, we'll get to that. I want to hear what Ahmed says about being the general because I've got a few stories about that. And Mansour, I hope everyone reads the really good piece in the Washington Post yesterday about you, Mansour, and about Hisham Sliti, one of my other old-time clients who I haven't seen for a while. Um, but as all, you guys have been the heroes because of what Mosem said in the end. What Guantanamo was about was not about the law, it's not about the lawyers. It's about embarrassing my government because we'd committed such a tremendous, um, oh, it was awful. I don't, you know, I give up trying to come up with words to explain how dreadful it was. Uh, in answer, ultimately, I know you know this most of it, finally lawyers get around to answer, answering the question um, about Guantanamo. There was one way in which it was absolutely the same as all the Guantanamo case, uh, all the death penalty cases. And I'd done about 300 death cases at that point. And that's that uh, we in America have the death penalty because we have big problems. We have a big crime rate. We have you know, 300 million guns. Uh, we have all sorts of drug problems, all sorts of other problems. And what we would do with the death penalty, and this last year, we executed 15 people out of 35,000 homicides uh, because a few people pretend that killing a few African-American men is going to somehow solve the complicated problems of the world. And in that sense, Guantanamo was the same thing, that we would put a whole bunch, 780 Muslim men, who are not American. You couldn't be American if you want to be a prisoner in Guantanamo because then we'd have to give you the same rights as we give Americans. Um, we put you there so we can pretend that somehow we're doing something in this much vaunted war on terror, or as Borat calls it, the war of terror. Um, and, you know, it's just disgusting. And I, I said probably to you, Mosin, but I certainly said it to Omar to guys um, that actually my African-American clients on death row were the bizarre beneficiaries of Guantanamo Bay because we as Americans had decided we hated you. Um, people I consider my, my good friends, um, that includes you, Shaka, I want you to know, um, that, that we hated you guys more than we hated African-American youth uh, in America. And to that extent, the death penalty started dying out in the United States. But the other side of it was, I remember with you, Mose, and I sat down and we spent those three days writing up the ways that you had been abused and also writing up, you know, the psychological problems you had and the fact you had witnessed that poor guy getting murdered in Bagram. And I went back to, we weren't allowed, as you all know, but perhaps some people don't, Whatever you guys told me was secret. It was a national security threat. So I wasn't allowed to reveal any of that to the world until it had gone through the census. And I remember sitting in the secret facility in Washington. And if I tell you where that is, I'll have to kill you. Um, and I was sitting there with Joe Margulis, and I had a 30-page thing that I had typed out of what Mosem had told me, and they would censored every single word. And I asked the guy um, who was the censor there, I said, you know, what are you censoring this stuff for? And he said, oh, you know, it's the methods and means of interrogation. And I said, yeah, you're telling me that all the stuff that I wrote out about Mosin being tortured is that. And are you telling me that murdering someone is a method of interrogation? And he just sort of smirked at me. And then I said, well, what about the stuff about what Mosin's suffering psychologically from post-traumatic stress disorder and all that? Oh, well, you know, we're protecting his privacy. We can't let that out. And I said, he wants it out. And, you know, it was just one of those things. And this was a good illustration of how, in the end, we've had to work together. And, you know, on this discussion, as some of my greatest allies 
you know, if only they hadn't let Shaka out, he'd still be there and he, we'd still be fighting together in Guantanamo, which was one of my great joys. Because just as he was trying to convert me to Islam, writing at the time, social outside, and he used to complain that I was making him a lefty. But, you know, we had to get that information out to the world so the world knew what was happening to all of you. And to do that was a big old battle. It was quite fun, that one. I wrote a letter to Tony Blair that said, Dear Tony, you know, we're mates. Um, at the top, it said, In re torture of a British national. And then it detailed for two pages what was going on for Mosman. And then the last sentence was, Anything that the censors have taken out of this means your friends, the Americans, don't want you to know about the torture that's going on here. Loved life. And they censored the whole thing except the first sentence and the last sentence. And we published that on the front page of the British newspapers. And I think that was one of the early times that people began to see the total horror, I mean, real horror, um, because the real answer to your question, Mosin, is it never occurred to me I'd ever have to talk to someone about how my country was torturing them. And for that, I can only apologize to all of you and everyone who's been touched by this, because what we've done to, to you is just horrible and there's nothing that can be said that's enough of an apology.